So it's been a few days now and uh, this pump has been whining like a bunch of stuck pigs. It also kind of smells a little bit like burnt toothpaste. So oh, I say a few days, might have been a few weeks. Well, you know, what's a few months between friends? What I'm trying to say is that this thing has been pumped more than a hooker on payday. And she's now f I've also got a hole in my knee and there's some weeds I need to pull out here. So not exactly too sure what's going on or if we're going to be able to fix it, but I do know that if we don't get it fixed, it's going to be air showers from now on. Or buying a new pump at like two and a half grand. So let's get it unplugged, uh, unbolted, unfreaking everything, get it into the shop. So I think what we have to do now is to split the motor. So we've got to take off this entire front section and the front of the motor casing and the back section here with a fan in it. So there should be a bearing in this side that we can remove and a bearing in the front case that we can remove. Hopefully it's not too difficult uh, pulling those out, replacing the bearings. And if there's nothing else uh, that needs to be repaired, we'll move it back together, go plug it in and uh, hopefully it works. Cool, so I'm pretty sure that it is the bearings that are at fault here. Bearings definitely not, uh, shouldn't sound like that. And also it shouldn't spin as freely as these are spinning. Well, uh, at least that is for bearings with uh, rubber seals in them. Uh, there should be a bit of rotational force uh, or rotational friction, should I say. What we probably also need to do first is remove the fan from uh, the motor's shaft here. I think we might, need, might have to pry it off with a screwdriver. Hopefully we don't break this little plastic fan. We're going to jam two screwdrivers in, one from this side, one from that side, and we're going to kind of work it. Um, we're going to take the screwdriver, put it in flat, and then we're going to work it this way and that way. We're not going to pull and push. So we get a lot more leverage that way. Uh, just keep in mind that you want to push on the very center of the plastic. You don't want to be pushing on this thin bit that's uh, on the outside over here. You've got to do the left-hand side, then the right-hand side, then the left-hand side, and then the right-hand side. Oh, fingers. And then it, it kind of comes off. Oh, shit, sorry about that, guys. Things get a little bit hairy here. Just don't uh, stab yourself because there's no water at the moment, so you're not gonna be able to wash it off. There we go. You just work it back and forth a little bit, slowly. Take your time, and then the last little bit you should be able to do by hand. Then the impeller, well not the impeller, but the fan will come off, just like that. So what I was talking about was wedging the screwdriver in here into the center hub section and then you kind of rotate the screwdriver left and right and you slowly work it back and forth. A little bit on this side, then a little bit on the other side and eventually it comes off. Okay, I've got all four bolts out the back, but we're also just gonna pull this front plate off. And uh, you can see there's not much behind it. There's a little drain hole at the bottom over there. So if any, wa if any water leaks past this seal, it runs out and down. Now this is, the, this is the bottom of the pump. The pump's just lying on its side. And uh, we need to pull this shaft out the center. Looks like there's also a little bit of a rubber washer that goes on there. And there's a rubber seal right on the inside here. We'll just carefully pry that off. We don't want to damage these things, definitely not, because it's not often you'll get spares for them, well, at least as far as I know. Um, doesn't look like there's anything wrong with them, so we don't have to replace them. There we go, it's just basically a little rubber washer, so we'll keep that. Yeah. 
we can see there we've got the rotor, the stator is inside there, and here's the one bearing, there's the other bearing, but luckily it doesn't look like there's any other damage, it's just the bearings that need to be pulled off and some new bearings that need to be pushed back on. A lot of times this is what happens with these pumps when they're running outside, it's generally the first thing that goes are the bearings and then a lot of people just replace the entire pump because they um, don't really know what to do or how simple it is to replace bearings. These bearings uh, I'll we'll check for you guys uh, just now when I go and buy them, but they're probably around about 60 or 80 Rand, so maybe $4 per bearing. That's really not a lot to compare that to two and a half grand for a new pump. Um, this is not always the failure point though. Sometimes this seal, now this seal goes on the front of this shaft over here. Um, sometimes that can fail, it leaks water past, leaks water into the bearing and then the bearing rusts and fails. Um, that's why we have this, this hole at the bottom here. So if the water does leak in, it runs out the bottom of the, the pump and then usually there's a telltale, well you can see this is wet over here and then the pump is leaking. But in this case we are lucky the seal is still in good condition, so I'll put this back on, I'll be very careful with that and we'll just replace the bearings. There is also a small rubber washer. You can see there's one here. That little rubber washer goes into the center of the housing. Well, I should actually show you on this side. It goes in there first, and then the bearing presses in. Cool, so I've got the new bearings, a 6202, it's a 2RS, so uh, there's two rubber seals on it, uh, NSK made in Poland, basically exactly the same thing that came off the shaft. Now, the correct thing to do would be to uh, press the bearings onto the, the shaft, uh, so of course we're just going to hammer them on. Um, obviously there is a very good reason for that. I'll think of it later. No, no, only, only kidding. Uh, if you've got a press at home, definitely use it. Uh, also, if you've got a press, you probably know how to use it and you don't need an explanation on how to press on a bearing. For those of you who don't have a press, um, if you've got a vise and a hammer, that will also work. So basically the bearing has got to be pressed onto the shaft like that, and then it's got to be pressed all the way home. So uh, the way we're going to do it here uh, is the way you can do it at home. Not Strictly the correct method, but it will work. I've got a washer that slides over the shaft and it also only just pushes on the inner race of the bearing. So we're going to slide that washer over the shaft, of course put the bearing on, and then we're going to put the um, put the armature or the, the rotor into the vise, and then we're going to tap on the top. I'm also using a soft uh, copper hammer, yeah? So we don't damage anything, and we'll just tap it home. There we go, you could hear the sound changed and our bearing is now all the way home. And there we go, other side is done. I've just taken the back cover off the motor. Um, it's also just loose, I didn't take it off earlier. But uh, just to show you that there's a little wavy washer that needs to be installed. So that's first going to go back into the, the casing or the housing like that. And then our rotor is going to press in. And you should just be able to push it in by hand. Oopsie. Maybe to give it a tap or two just by hand. Remember, don't use a hammer. We don't hit in bearings. And there we go. And you can hear that it's bottomed out and spinning nice and freely. So... Um, this bit can now be slid back into the motor casing and then we can uh, put on the front of the housing. Similar thing on this side, we've got a small rubber washer inside there. Um, I've already installed it into the groove or into the housing. So just don't forget about that. Now, your motor might not have this, not a problem. Just make sure you do everything in the reverse order that you took it apart um, and then you've got no spare parts afterwards. And I'm sure you'll be just fine. Basically doing the same thing here, sliding the rest of the motor back onto the front, the front housing plate or the mounting plate, if you will, just like that. There we go, now it's together. And we can slide in our bolts 
And then uh, four of them, of course, one, two, and there's two on that side. We'll tighten it up. Assembling the pump section, believe it or not, is the reverse order of what you did to take it apart. First thing it's going to go back on is a rubber washer. So we'll slide that back on, make sure that it's nice and flush with the casing. It's nice and flush. Also, another small little rubber gasket type thing. It's got a recess at the bottom that lines up with the recess at the bottom of the pump. We'll pop that back on. What is next? Uh, O-ring. We've got quite a big O-ring here. That's also got a recess to go into, just like that. And then we've got our main seal. So the main seal is uh, two items. It's a spring and a rubber seal over there. Uh, so this thing is going to go on, but before we put that on, actually, I'm just forgetting now, we've got to put the back of the pump housing on. We can see there's also the recess was at the bottom, so we'll put that back down to the bottom, just like that. And uh, yeah, then we'll press this, this whole lot on. Might just be easier to press the rubber seal on first and then after that is on, we'll just pop the spring in. This might require a little bit of working back and forward. You just don't want to damage the rubber, um, the rubber seal inside you. So just slowly work it back and forth and uh, prying, uh, applying a little bit of pressure on either side until it's all the way home. Spring goes on, then the impeller goes on, and we can put on the, the washers and the nut. Now that the front section is all together, we can carefully tap our fan back onto the back of the motor shaft. So we might not even have to tap it, maybe just the last bit. Just push it down there a little bit. Tap that like that, and it does still need to go down a little bit further. So what I'm going to do is use a socket, uh, the socket that is big enough to go over the motor shaft, but it still presses on this uh, inner flange of plastic. And we'll tap it a little bit closer to the back of the motor housing, and that'll be good to go. <laughs> So the pump rebuild is pretty much complete. Well, except for the wiring and the front cover over here, we'll obviously do that outside next to the tanks, but I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. Now, of course, you can see I did give it a bit of a sprinkle of red paint. Don't be too pressed though. It might blow off in the wind, but at least for now, it looks a lot better. Also, the stainless steel section on the front here, I hit it with a bit of scotch bright, so I reckon we might be good for another couple of years. Pretty happy with the way it's turned out so far. The big question is though, does the repair actually work? And is it gonna run? Let's go and install it quickly and check it out. Cool, so everything is installed and plugged back in. Of course, the pump isn't on yet. Uh, we've got to bleed the system, but I think it'll be fine because the water in this tank is higher than the actual pump. So I've opened the valve and we do have a little bleed port here. So I reckon we should be able to open this and then let the air out and then a I assume the water should come out at some stage as it fills. I might assume wrong. Hmm. What have I not opened? Small apprentice area. So it turns out that if you don't turn on the main shutoff valve for the tank, well, of course the pump won't fill up with, with uh, water. Oopsie. We can see there it's basically squirming out there 
almost up to three bars. And you can hear the you can hear this reservoir filling up. So that's it chaps, uh, but please, just before you guys go, if you found the video useful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help to get it recommended and shared far and wide. Also, leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought about this repair, or maybe you've got your own experiences from, from repairing uh, your own pumps, some tips and tricks that you can pass on to others. It's always, always great to hear from you. I'm super stoked that this turned out to be a simple bearing repair, two bearings costing 120 Rand. Uh, probably around about uh, five or six dollars <laughs> really not much and a little bit of effort something that you guys can actually do in your own garage at home my name is grant burton this is the burton builds garage and you guys will see me in the next video cheers